Imagine, you are an astronaut adrift in the silent velvet expanse of interstellar space. Your ship, the Odyssey, suffered a catastrophic failure. Now you float alone, a tiny speck of life in an impossibly vast cosmos. No star, no planet, only a perfect circle of absolute nothingness, a hole punched through the fabric of reality itself. This is Cygnus X1, a stellar mass black hole, and your trajectory is taking you straight towards it. The stars behind it are not merely blocked, they are warped, their light bent into a beautiful terrifying halo around the void. A cosmic lens, magnificent and deadly. There is no engine to fire, no rescue mission on its way. You, your spacesuit, the inexorable pull of gravity's ultimate triumph. Your suit's radio crackles with a faint ghostly static. Mission control is a lifetime away, their voice is already delayed by minutes that stretch into an eternity. You try to describe what you see, but words feel inadequate, clumsy. How do you explain a colour that isn't a colour, but the very absence of light? How do you articulate a profound gravitational tug that feels less like falling and more like the universe itself is being dragged into a single infinitesimal point, and you are just along for the ride? All around you, the accretion disk, a maelstrom of superheated gas and dust stolen from a companion star. It glows with the intensity of a billion suns, painting the darkness in hues of violent blue and searing white. It's the last beautiful thing you will ever see. You are a scientist. You are a philosopher. You are a poet, all at once. Your mission was to study the cosmos, and now you are about to become part of its most profound mystery. Fear is a distant echo replaced by a strange, almost serene curiosity. This is the final frontier, not just of space, but of knowledge itself. The laws of physics as we know them are about to be broken, and you have a front row seat. Every textbook, every equation, every theory, you're falling towards a place where space and time cease to have the meaning we give them. You are a messenger heading for a destination from which no message can ever be sent. As you drift closer, the silence becomes more profound. The universe seems to hold its breath. The distant stars of the Milky Way, once a comforting blanket, now look like scattered embers from a dying fire, their light struggling against the immense gravitational field. You check your biometric readings, heart rate steady, respiration normal, it's a strange paradox. Your body is calm, but the universe around you is screaming. The gentle pull you felt moments ago is now a determined, insistent force. The abyss is no longer just in front of you. It is all around you. It is pulling you in. And you, in these final moments, decide not to fight it. You decide to simply watch. So what is this monster you're falling into? Let's demystify it. A black hole is not a hole in the traditional sense. It's not an empty void. Quite the opposite. It is an extraordinary amount of matter crushed into an impossibly small space. Imagine taking a star ten times more massive than our sun and squeezing it down into a sphere the size of London. The result is an object with a gravitational field so colossally powerful that nothing, and not even light, can escape its grasp. It is the corpse of a massive star left behind after a supernova explosion that blasted its outer layers into space. Think of space-time as a stretched-out rubber sheet. If you place a bowling ball on it, the sheet dips and curves. That's gravity. A planet like Earth creates a gentle curve. The sun, a deeper one. A black hole, however, is not a bowling ball. It's a pinprick with almost infinite density. It punctures the sheet, creating a well so deep it seems to have no bottom. It is a waterfall in the river of space-time, and once you drift over the edge, there is no swimming back upstream. This is the essence of a black hole, the ultimate distortion of the universe's fabric. This is why they are black. It's not because they are made of some dark material. It's because their escape velocity, the speed you need to break free, is greater than the speed of light. Since nothing can travel faster than light, nothing can get out. Any light that crosses its boundary is trapped forever. No light can reach your eyes. We only see them by their effects on the space and matter around them. Gravitational lensing of starlight, orbits of nearby stars dancing with an invisible partner, and incredibly bright accretion disks of matter spiraling inward. These objects are not cosmic vacuum cleaners. They don't roam the galaxy, sucking up everything in their path. Their pull is still governed by the inverse square law. If you replaced our sun with a black hole of the same mass, the planets would keep their orbits. We would continue in our orbits, though it would get terribly cold and dark. You have to get very, very close to fall in. Unfortunately for you, in your drifting spacesuit, you are already far too close. 
the waterfall is beckoning. The boundary you are now approaching, the most famous landmark in cosmology, it is the event horizon. This is not a physical surface, you wouldn't bump into it. No wall, no membrane, no signpost that says turn back now. A purely conceptual boundary, a line in space-time, the point of no return. Once you cross this invisible threshold, the laws of physics seal your fate, there is no way out. All paths now lead to one place, the center of the black hole. The future collapses to a single destination. As you tumble across the event horizon, something extraordinary fails to happen. From your perspective, nothing changes. No flash of light, no jolt, no sensation of passing a gate. You are still just falling. Look at your watch, check your suit's oxygen, send a message back out. That message will never arrive. It's trapped with you. For you, time ticks normally. But to a distant observer on the Odyssey, a different story unfolds. You appear to slow as you approach the horizon. Your movements grow agonizingly sluggish. Your final wave taking years, then centuries. Your image reddens and dims. The light from your suit is stretched by gravity. You seem to freeze at the edge, your image plastered on the horizon, a ghostly, frozen echo. You're never seen crossing. While you fall into the unknown, you also remain a fading fixture on its boundary. This duality comes from Einstein's general relativity, gravity warps space and time. For you, the fall is finite, maybe very short. For the universe, it never finishes. You exist in two states, one you falls toward the center, while the other is frozen at the edge. A paradox, a ghost in the cosmic machine, two tales, two different endings. You have crossed the event horizon, there is no going back. Now, a new and rather unpleasant physical process begins to take hold. It has a whimsical name, but its effects are anything but. Physicists call it spaghettification. The term was coined by Stephen Hawking, and it describes exactly what you think it does. The black hole's gravitational pull is not uniform. The part of your body closer to the singularity, the center of the black hole, is being pulled much, much more forcefully than the part of your body farther away. A tidal force of unimaginable power is about to take you apart, atom by atom. Let's assume you are falling feet first. The gravity at your boots is exponentially stronger than the gravity at your head. This difference in gravitational force, known as the tidal gradient, begins to stretch you. At first it might feel like a gentle tug, as if you're being pulled on a medieval rack. But this feeling quickly intensifies. The pull on your feet becomes thousands, then millions, then billions of times stronger than the pull on your head. Your body is elongated, drawn out into a long, thin strand. Your bones would snap, your muscles would tear, your very cells would be pulled apart. The process isn't just vertical, as you are stretched, you are also squeezed from the sides. The gravitational forces are all directed towards the single point at the center, so every part of your body is being funneled inwards. Imagine squeezing toothpaste from a tube. You are the toothpaste. This horizontal compression would crush your body into an ever thinner stream of matter. You would cease to be a person. You would cease to be a collection of organic molecules. You would become a stream of fundamental particles, a river of atoms flowing towards the singularity, indistinguishable from the remnants of a star or a planet that fell in before you. This is the grim reality of falling into a stellar mass black hole like Cygnus X1. The tidal forces are so extreme that spaghettification would begin long before you even reach the event horizon. You would be torn apart before you ever had the chance to experience the mysteries within. Your consciousness would wink out of existence, your constituent atoms joining the chaotic flow of matter destined for the center. It is a violent and definitive end. You are not just dying, you are being fundamentally unmade, your physical form deconstructed by the most powerful force in the cosmos. Your personal story ends here, becoming just another bit of data for the universe. Let's rewind a bit. We've established that for an outside observer, your fall seems to take an eternity. For you, it's a finite journey. This discrepancy is one of the most mind-bending consequences of Einstein's theory of general relativity, a phenomenon known as gravitational time dilation. Time is not a constant universal metronome ticking at the same rate for everyone. It is relative. It is a river that flows at different speeds in different places, and gravity is what controls the current. The stronger the gravity, the slower time flows. This isn't science fiction, it's a measurable reality. GPS satellites orbiting high above Earth where gravity is weaker have to constantly adjust their clocks to stay in sync with us on the ground. 
As you fall towards the black hole, you are plunging into a region of ever-increasing gravity. From your perspective, your watch ticks normally. One second is still one second. But if you could look back out at the distant universe, you would see a truly astonishing spectacle. You would see the universe in fast forward. Stars would whip across the sky. Galaxies would spin like pinwheels. You would see cosmic history unfold in a matter of moments. You might watch the sun expand into a red giant consuming the earth. You might see new star systems form from nebulae, watch them die. You are witnessing the future of the cosmos play out before your very eyes. This effect is beautifully, if not entirely, accurately portrayed in the film Interstellar. When the crew lands on the water planet near the supermassive black hole Gargantua, every hour they spend on the surface is equivalent to seven years for their crewmate remaining in orbit. This is not Hollywood fantasy. It is a direct application of Einstein's equations. For you, falling into the black hole, the time dilation is even more extreme. As you approach the singularity, the point of infinite density at the center, time for the outside universe effectively speeds up to infinity. In the final fraction of a second of your existence, you would witness the entire future of the universe flash before you. This leads to a profound philosophical question. In a way, by falling into a black hole, you become immortal. You travel to the end of time. You get to see how it all ends. Of course, this is a journey with no return ticket, and your seeing is a fleeting moment before your atoms are crushed out of existence. But the information of what you are, the matter and energy that once constituted your body, is now on a one-way trip to the final moments of the cosmos. You have not just left space. You have, in a sense, left time as we know it, becoming a passenger on an express train to the end of the line. Not all black holes are created equal. The experience of falling into one depends dramatically on its size. The stellar mass black hole we imagined you falling into, Cygnus X1, is a brute. It's relatively small, perhaps only 20 times the mass of our sun. Its event horizon is just 120 kilometers across. Its gravitational gradient is incredibly steep. The tidal forces are immense. Spaghettification would tear you to shreds long before you reach the horizon. It's a short, brutal and frankly uninformative journey. You wouldn't live to see any of the wonders inside, but what if you fell into a different kind of beast? A supermassive black hole, titans of the cosmos, found at the heart of nearly every large galaxy, including our own Milky Way. Our galaxy's central black hole, Sagittarius A, pronounced A-star, has a mass of over four million suns. Its event horizon stretches millions of kilometers across. Because it's so vast, the gravitational gradient is much, much gentler. The pull difference between your head and feet would be almost negligible. This changes everything. If you fell into Sagittarius A, you could cross the event horizon completely intact. The point of no return would pass without immediate physical drama. You would be inside, alive and conscious, able to look around. Tidal forces would still exist, but they'd only become deadly much closer to the central singularity. Depending on size, you might have minutes or even hours inside before being torn apart. This is the key difference. A small black hole kills you on the doorstep. A supermassive one invites you inside first, a fascinating, purely theoretical window of opportunity. What would you see in those final moments? What secrets does the interior hold? The laws of physics break down at the singularity. Einstein's relativity predicts infinite density and zero volume. To know what happens next, we need a theory uniting gravity and quantum mechanics, a true theory of everything, the holy grail of modern physics. So, you've survived the event horizon of a supermassive black hole. You are now in a region of space-time from which no information can escape. What happens in these final moments before you meet the singularity? Here we leave the realm of established physics and enter the world of speculative but mathematically grounded theory. The singularity ahead is not just a point. It might be a ring singularity if the black hole is rotating. It might even be a gateway, a theoretical bridge to another part of our universe or to another universe entirely, Einstein-Rosen bridge. More famously, a wormhole. This is not the stable, traversable wormhole of science fiction. Any such bridge would likely be incredibly unstable, collapsing the instant anything tried to pass through it. And even if you could pass through, you would still be facing the singularity, a wall of infinite density that would destroy you. 
Yet, the possibility, however remote, fires the imagination. Could black holes be the seeds of new universes? Some physicists, like Lee Smolin, have proposed cosmological natural selection, where a new universe is born from the singularity of every black hole with slightly different physical laws. Another mind-bending idea is the holographic principle, proposed by Gerard de Hooft and Leonard Susskind. It suggests all the information about the three-dimensional volume of a black hole, everything that has ever fallen into it, including you, is encoded on its two-dimensional event horizon, so like a cosmic hard drive. In this sense, you are not truly gone. A version of your information is smeared across the surface, a hologram of your former self. This idea has profound implications. Our entire three-dimensional universe might be a holographic projection of information stored on a distant two-dimensional surface. These ideas push the boundaries of what we can know, Black holes are more than cosmic destroyers. They are nature's ultimate laboratories. They are the places where our most fundamental theories, relativity and quantum mechanics, collide. They are the keepers of secrets about the nature of space, time, information, and perhaps even reality itself. As you, our theoretical astronaut, finally dissolve into a stream of particles at the singularity, your journey ends, but the questions you represent, the grand what-ifs of the cosmos, continue to inspire us. They remind us that the universe is not only stranger than we imagine, but stranger than we can imagine. And that surely is a wonderful thing.